Good day. My name is Mars Miguel C. Monte, and I am a third year nursing student from San Beda University. And today, I will demonstrate providing tracheostomy care and open system suctioning. So the first thing that we will do is to identify the client by checking his ID band. And then we're going to ask him to state his name and then birth date. So good day, sir. My name is Mars Miguel C. Monte, and I am a third year nursing student from San Beda University. And is it okay if I check your ID band? Uh, sir, may I ask you to state your name as well as your birthday? Okay. And then after that, we're going to determine the need of the patient for uh, tracheostomy care. And then we're, all, uh, we're also going to assess the patient's uh, pain and administer pain medication if it is indicated. The next thing that we will do is to explain what we're going to do or the procedure for today and the reason to the patient, even if the patient does not appear to be alert. And then, we need to reassure our patient that we will interrupt the procedure if he indicates a respiratory difficulty. So we're going to explain the procedure to our patient. Uh, good day, Sir El Guapo. Today, we will perform a tracheostomy care to keep your trach tube clean. So this procedure helps prevent your tube from clogging and it also decreases your risk for infections. In addition, we will also perform uh, suctioning to remove the thick mucus and uh, secretions from your trachea and your lower airway. Now sir, you just need to relax and tell us if the procedure becomes uncomfortable. Is that okay with you sir? And then after uh, getting our patient's consent, we will now begin. So we will begin by performing hand hygiene. So in this uh, case, I will be using an alcohol-based hand drum. And then after that, we're going to adjust the bed to comfortable working position. And then we're going to lower the side rails closer to us. If the patient is conscious, we're going to place him in a semi-fowler's position. If the patient is unconscious, we're going to place him in a lateral position facing us. And then the next thing that we need to do is to move over the uh, bed table close to our work area and raise it to our uh, waist height. Uh, next, we're, uh, we're going to put on a face shield. We can also put on a hair cap as an additional uh, protection. We need to make sure to cover all our hair. And then our uh, face shield or our goggles to protect us from any secretion or fluids and then as well as our mask so the next thing that we will do is to suction the tracheostomy if it is necessary if tracheostomy has been suctioned before we're going to remove the soiled side dressing and discard before removal of gloves used to perform suctioning. Now we are going to prepare the supplies that we are going to use for this uh, procedure. The first thing that we need to do is to open the tracheostomy care kit and the separate beans touching only the edges. If the kit is not available, we're going to open three sterile basin. So here, uh, the kit is not available, so I will be using a separate suction catheter. So we're going to open it and prepare it, only touching the edges. And also we have prepared here uh, three sterile basins. So we're going to touch only the edges. We have one, we have two, and then we have three. And then we're going to fill one basin, uh, 0 0.5 inch deep, with hydrogen peroxide or half uh, hydrogen peroxide and half saline solution. Uh, it is based on the facility policy. So we're going to fill it half hydrogen peroxide. And of course, the saline solution. And then after that, we're going to fill the two basins again with 0.5 inch deep width 
uh, saline solution. So the two basins that we have here. And then after that, we're going to open the sterile brush or pipe cleaners if they are already, uh, if they are not available in the cleaning kit. And then we're going to open additional sterile gauze pad. So this is our sterile gauze pad. And we're going to open it. And we're going to set it aside. And then after that, we're going to put on disposable gloves. And then now we're going to remove the oxygen source if one is present. And then next we're going to, uh, so we're going to open it. So this is the oxygen source. We can set it aside for a while. And then we're going to uh, remove the site dressing and dispose it in the trash. So we're going to remove the site dressing and then dispose it in the trash. And then after that, uh, we're going to stabilize the outer cannula and the face plate of the tracheostomy with uh, one hand. And then afterwards, we're going to rotate the lock on the inner cannula in a counterclockwise motion with the other hand and then we're going to release it. So we're going to rotate it in a counterclockwise rotation. And then once done, we're going to continue holding the face plate and then we're going to gently release the inner cannula and we're going to carefully drop it in the basin containing the hydrogen peroxide that we have prepared earlier. So we're going to drop it in the uh, basin and then we're going to replace the oxygen source over the cannula if there is an available and we will remove our gloves and then discard. So let's say that this is our replacement. We're just going to put it over the outer cannula. And then now we're going to remove our clean gloves. Once we have uh, removed the soiled uh, gauze in our patient. So remove our disposable or clean gloves. And then now we're going to put on sterile gloves. So in putting on sterile gloves, we will maintain the sterility by only touching the edges. Again, only touch the edges. And then rearrange our fingers to their correct position. And then once done, uh, with our dominant hand, uh, make sure that it is gloved. We're going to pick up the sterile catheter that we have prepared earlier. So we're going to get it. And then using our non-dominant hand, we're going to pick up the connecting tubing uh, that is connected to the suction catheter. So it is right here. And then the next thing that we need to do is to uh, connect it. And 
And then after connecting, we need to moisten the catheter by dipping it into the container of the sterile catheter. So we're going to uh, moisten it. However, in this case, we will be using the basin that we have prepared. So we're going to moisten it. We're going to advance a little. And then once done, we're going to uh, occlude the white tube. And then we're going to check if there is a uh, suction coming from our uh, equipment. So the next thing that we need to do is to hyperventilate the patient using our non-dominant hand in a manual resuscitation bag, delivering uh, three to six breaths. Or we can also use the side mechanism on a mechanical ventilator. And the next, we need to open the adapter on the mechanical ventilator tubing or remove the manual resuscitation bag with our non-dominant hand. Now using, my non -dom I, now, using my dominant hand, I'm going to gently and quickly insert the catheter into the trachea. So we're going to remove the oxygen source. And then now that it is exposed, I'm going to uh, insert the catheter into the trachea. And then while doing this, uh, we're going to advance the catheter to the predetermined length. So again, our dominant hand is our sterile hand. And then it is also important to remember not to occlude the Y port upon inserting the catheter. So it should be open. So we will stop if we can already feel a resistance or if the patient started coughing. And then we're going to apply the suction intermittently. As we occlude the Y port on the catheter with our thumb of the non-dominant hand. And then we're going to gently rotate the catheter as it is being withdrawn. So gently. And then uh, we need to remember also not to suction for more than uh, 10 to 15 seconds at a time. And then after that, we will repeat the process of hyperventilating the patient using our non-dominant hand and manual resuscitation bag, delivering again three to six breaths. And then uh, we're going to replace the oxygen delivery device, if applicable, using our non-dominant hand and we need to instruct the patient to take uh, several deep breaths. If the patient is mechanically ventilated, we need to close the adapter on the uh, mechanical tubing or replace a uh, ventilator tubing and use the sign mechanism on the mechanical ventilator. And then now, we're going to flush the catheter with saline. So with saline solution, we're going to flush the catheter. And then we need, uh, with that, we need to occlude the Y port. So we're doing this in order to assess the effectiveness of the suctioning, and we need to repeat as needed according to the patient's tolerance. So if there are still mucus or secretions, we can repeat the process all over again. And then, we need to remember to wrap the suction catheter around our dominant hand between attempts. Now, again, we're going to apply the suction, similar to what we have done before, in order to uh, get the secretions in our patient. So, again, we're going to apply the suction by intermittently occluding the white port on the catheter with the thumb of our non-dominant hand. So, again, we're going to insert it until we reach the resistance or the end and then we're going to occlude using the white port as we slowly uh, withdraw the catheter. And then we're going to rotate it upon withdrawal. So same as before, we need to remember not to suction for more than uh, 10 to 15 seconds at a time. And then again, we're going to repeat the process of hyperventilating the patient using our non-dominant hand and a manual resuscitation bag, delivering 3 to 6 breaths. And then we're going to replace the oxygen delivery kit, uh, delivery device, if applicable, using our non-dominant hand and instruct the patient to take several deep breaths. If the patient is mechanically ventilated, we're going to close the adapter on the mechanical tubing or replace the ventilator tubing and use a sign mechanism on the mechanical ventilator. And then we're going to turn off the suction. So uh, we're going to turn off the suction right here in our wall. And then we're going to assist our patient to a comfortable position. So we can now uh, discard the used uh, catheter. 
so we're going to discard. And then we need to make sure that the suction is already turned off. And then we need to assist our patient to a comfortable position. And then we also need to raise the bed rail. And then we need to offer uh, oral hygiene after suctioning our patient. So again, after doing uh, those things, we need to reassess our uh, patient's respiratory status, including the respiratory rate, the effort of our patient in breathing, the oxygen saturation. So with that, we can use a pulse oximeter uh, with a regular uh, measurement of 95 to 100%, and then the lung signs of our patient by auscultating it. And then after that, we perform aftercare. We can replace the ghost that uh, we will put for our patient, and we can also bring back his or her uh, oxygen supply if there is and then again we need to provide privacy and then we will remove our uh, protective equipment So most importantly, we need to document the procedure and uh, check the status of our patient. So that's uh, for the uh, suctioning and uh, tracheostomy care. So thank you very much for watching and God bless.